The reign of the monarchs of England is a long line of succession which stretches back over a thousand years. But the line of succession was not always smooth and some faced threats from pretenders. But some pretenders had a very real claim to the throne. This is the story of Charles Edward Stuart. Charles was the son of the old pretender, James Francis Edward Stuart, who was the son of the exiled Stuart King, James II of England and VII of Scotland. He was born in Rome on the 20th of December 1720, where his father had been given a residence by Pope Clement XI. He spent most of his childhood in Rome Charles had a privileged childhood in Rome, where he was brought up Catholic in a loving but argumentative family. As the legitimate heirs to the throne of England, Scotland and Ireland, according to the Jacobite succession, his family lived with a sense of pride and staunchly believed in the divine right of kings. Charles's grandfather, James II of England and Ireland and VII of Scotland, ruled the countries from 1685 to 1688. He was disposed when the English Parliament invited the Dutch Protestant William III and his wife, Princess Mary, James's eldest daughter, to replace him in the Revolution of 1688. Many Protestants, including several prominent parliamentarians, had been worried that King James aimed to return England to the Catholic fold. Since the exile of James, the Jacobite cause had striven to return the Stuarts to the throne of England and Scotland, which had been united in 1603 under James VI and I, with the parliaments joined by the Acts of Unions in 1707 as the United Kingdom of Great Britain. In 1737, James sent his son on a tour through the main Italian cities to complete his education as a prince and man of the world. The distinction with which he was received on his journey showed how respected the exiled house was by the Catholic powers of Europe. His father planned to rely on foreign aid in his attempts to restore himself to the British and Irish thrones, and the idea of rebellion unassisted by invasion or by support of any kind from abroad was one which was pursued by Charles Edward. In December 1743, Charles's father named him Prince Regent, giving him authority to act in his name. In Rome and Paris, he had seen many supporters of the Stuart cause, and he was aware that in every European court, the Jacobites were represented. His father managed to obtain the renewed support of the French government in 1744, whereupon Charles Edward travelled to France with the sole purpose of commanding a French army that he would lead in an invasion of England. The invasion never materialised, as the invasion fleet was scattered by a storm. Eighteen months later, he led a French-backed rebellion intending to place his father on the thrones of Great Britain and Ireland. He raised funds to fit out the Elizabeth, an old man of war of 66 guns, and the Dew Tillery, a 16-gun privateer, which successfully landed him and seven companions at Ariski on 23rd of July 1745. However, receiving a cool reception from the clan leaders there, he set sail again and arrived at the Bay of Loch Nan Uma. He had hoped for support from the French fleet, but it was badly damaged by storms and he was left to raise an army in Scotland. Many Highland clans, both Catholic and Protestant, still supported the Jacobite cause and Charles hoped for a warm welcome from these clans to start an insurgency of Jacobites throughout Britain. Although many clan chiefs initially discouraged him, he gained the support of Donald Cameron of Lochiel and thereafter enough support for a serious rebellion. On the 19th of August, he raised his father's standard at Glenfinnan and gathered a force large enough to enable him to march towards Edinburgh. His progress was helped by the action of British leader General Sir John Cope, who marched to Inverness, leaving the South Country undefended. Lord Provost Archibald Stuart controlled the city, which quickly surrendered. Meanwhile, Sir John Cope had brought his forces by sea to Dunbar. On the 21st of September 1745, Charles defeated his army, 
the only government army in Scotland at the Battle of Preston Pans. By November, Charles was marching south at the head of approximately 6,000 men. Having taken Carlisle, his army progressed as far as Swarkston Bridge in Derbyshire. Here, despite Charles' objection, his council decided to return to Scotland. Given the lack of English and French support and rumours that a large government force was being amassed, the Jacobites marched north once more, winning the Battle of Falkirk Moor and resting at Inverness, but they were later pursued by George II's son, Prince William, Duke of Cumberland, who caught up with them at the Battle of Culloden on the 16th of April 1746. Charles ignored the advice of General Lord George Murray and chose to fight on flat, open, marshy ground where his forces would be exposed to superior government firepower. The Jacobites attacked, charging into musket fire and grape shot fired from the cannons. The charge broke through the bayonets of the redcoats in one place, but they were shot down by a second line of soldiers, and the survivors fled. Cumberland's troops allegedly committed a number of atrocities as they hunted for the defeated Jacobite soldiers, earning him the title the Butcher from the Highlanders. Charles hid in the moors of Scotland, always barely ahead of the government forces. Many Highlanders aided him and none of them betrayed him for the £30,000 reward. He ultimately evaded capture and left the country aboard a French frigate, arriving in France in September. With the Jacobite cause lost, Charles spent the remainder of his life on the continent, except for one secret visit to London. While back in France, Charles had numerous affairs. The one with his first cousin, Marie-Louise, wife of Jules, Prince of Gemini, resulted in a short-lived son called Charles. In 1748, he was expelled from France under the terms of the Treaty of aix la la chapelle that ended the War of Austrian Succession. Charles lived for several years in exile with his Scottish mistress, Clementia Walkinshaw, whom he met and may have begun a relationship with during the 1745 rebellion. In 1753, the couple had a daughter, Charlotte. Charles's inability to cope with the collapse of the cause led to his problem with alcohol, and mother and daughter left Charles with his father's convenience. After his defeat, Charles indicated to the remaining supporters of the Jacobite cause in England that, accepting the impossibility of his recovering the English and Scots crowns while he remained a Roman Catholic, he was willing to commit himself to reigning as a Protestant. Accordingly, he visited London in 1750 and conformed to the Protestant faith by receiving Anglican Communion. In 1759, at the height of the Seven Years' War, Charles was summoned to a meeting in Paris with the French Foreign Minister. Charles failed to make a good impression, being argumentative and idealistic in his expectations. The French were planning a full-scale invasion of England involving upwards of 100,000 men, to which they hoped to add a number of Jacobites led by Charles. However, the French foreign minister was so little impressed with Charles that he dismissed the prospect of Jacobite assistance. The French invasion, which was Charles' last realistic chance to recover the British throne for the Stuart dynasty, was ultimately fought by the naval defeats of Quigbaron Bay and Lagos. Charles died in Rome of a stroke on the 30th of January 1788, aged just 67. The Cardinal stated that he died on the morning of the 31st, as it was deemed unlucky to have him declared dead on the same date as his great-grandfather, King Charles I, who had met his end on the scaffold at Whitehall Palace. He was first buried in Frascati Cathedral near Rome, where his brother Henry Benedict Stuart was bishop. Upon Henry's death in 1807, Charles' remains, except his heart, were moved to the crypt of St. Peter's Belisca in the Vatican, where they were laid to rest next to those of his brother and his father, and below the spot where the monument to the royal Stuarts would later be erected. His heart remained in Frascati Cathedral, where it was contained in a small urn beneath the floor under a monument. 
Charles Edward Stuart has gone down in history as a romantic figure of heroic failure, and the question of what if he had not turned back at Derby. During his lifetime, he was also known as the Young Pretender and the Young Chevalier, but in popular memory he is known as Bonnie Prince Charlie.